So, boys and girls, today we have a new GS that we've built for one of our friends who is going for a Euro trip. So, he's gonna probably hit around 20 countries in Europe. He's gonna pass by Morocco, Algeria, around that area. So, I know some people will think this is too much. It's an opinion thing, but this bike is gonna be mostly on roads, on light gravel. It's not gonna be hardcore off-road, I would agree. With this much uh, equipment on, it might be difficult to do uh, proper off-roading, but that's not the intention of this bike. It's gonna be mainly Europe and a few gravel roads in Morocco and Algeria. So I'm gonna walk you through what we have done to this bike, piece by piece. Why did we choose this? Why did we go with that? And then we're gonna show you all the functionality that came with the uh, electronics that we installed on the So we're gonna start with the first category of modifications and that is protection. So to start with, from the front going backwards, we've put the Lone Rider headlight guard. It's uh, something that people like because of the orange, the orange C that comes on. It comes with a grill, it comes with a clear uh, protector and then the light. It is also foldable so you can clean under the light. A lot of people go with the, for this, they really like it. The second part, we've put the Wonderlish radiator protectors here. You know, a little stone coming from here, there, these are very sensitive, so it is very important to have a radiator protector. So that's on there from Wonderlish. We've put the indicator protection, both on the front and the rear of in the uh, bike. So the full four indicators are protected. We put the Wonderlish fog light protection. This is the original uh, fog light. Uh, so that's on as well. We've put the fork sliders from Wonderlish to protect the fork and uh, this area around the brake. Then we've put the SW Motic bash plate uh, down under and we've put the Wonderlish uh, cylinder head guards. These are very important, especially if you're going off-road, there is a small stone protruding here or there. These are extremely important. Finally, from this side, we've put the Wonderlish extension guard uh, with the support bar. So if it falls, the weight does not push the bar inside. So this is also have been placed from Wonderlish. Additionally, we have added the bark busters. These are literally indestructible. I've used them so many times. I dropped the bike a hundred times and they never budge. So these will protect your levers, will protect this area. This is not considered protection, but I consider it something very practical for falling. These are the double take mirrors. So when you go off-road, you can just twist these, put it on the inside, so when you fall, it doesn't break. It is a well-known fact that when the GS drops, mirrors normally shatter, they break, or they actually break from the base. So this is a very good solution, and they are really big, so the visibility is very clear. Right, so from the back, to protect the, the entire lower area, including the shaft, the pegs, and all this, we have put the uh, crash pad hub on the shaft and the paralever arm protection. So this will protect the shaft if the bike falls on the side from hitting any, uh, any part of the shaft. Additionally, we've put what they call a Wonderlish carbon protection. So this comes from below. In case you're going over a rock and the bike slides over a rock, that rock does not hit the shaft directly. So this is another important thing to keep in mind. Uh, then we have added the uh, uh, gear lever thingy, which will bend inside if the bike falls. Of course, this is not just, uh, it's not a protection item, but it's something that will help you continue your trip if you fall. This, the original one, always breaks when you fall or at least bends. So it's nice to have and it is adjustable, so you can adjust it. This is an extremely important part. This is the first thing I would install on a GS. This is the switch guard. So the side stand has a switch here. And basically if this switch breaks, the bike considers the side stand, uh, stand as it's down. If it's down, the bike doesn't start and you're stuck. So again, as the other side, we have the extension uh, protection for the tank. We have the support bar. We have the cylinder head protection. And uh, that's about it from a protection perspective. Of course, we, we opted to paint the protection bars for styling. So we went something very close to the GS uh, Kalamata color, uh, and it gave a bike a really nice look, something very different than any other bike. For luggage, we have uh, a few options. Uh, this bike, we've put uh, a tank bag, a few side bags, and the panniers, and we're gonna go through this one by one. So initially, 
We started with the tank bag. So this is the SW Motic uh, City Pro tank bag. The great thing about these bags is you, you have like six or seven sizes and they all fit the same base, the same ring. So basically, if you use the bike in, inside the city, you can have a small bag, you go outside, you have the bigger one. So with this, we went with the City Pro, very easy to put on and off. That's it, it's on. Uh, it has a magnet and a locking system. So this will be very useful for his documents, for his camera, for his quick access products. The second thing we did, we put, although it might not be considered luggage, but we put a cup holder just for him to access water or anything of that sort. And then we've put the Wonderlish frame bags. So these can do quite a lot of, uh, take quite a lot of stuff. So you can put anything you want here and they cover that hole in the frame here. There is one on this side, one on the other side. And finally, we went with the Globe Scout panniers. The good thing about these panniers, they fit your original uh, carriers, uh, your luggage carriers. So we've put the Globe Scout panniers, uh, 45 by 37. And the top one uh, is a uh, 37 liters, I think. Uh, sorry, 40 liters. On those, we went with the SW Motic uh, bottles. So these bottles will contain uh, oil, engine oil. They will contain the shaft oil. They will contain on the other side the coolant. And we have two two liter uh, fuel cans, just in case he runs out of fuel, there is a bit of more fuel. With all this in, we added the two SW Motic dry bags. This is a 350 and a 180, and they can be attached to each other and then attached to the bike. This will have his daily stuff. When he goes down to a hotel, he can just pick up this and go down to a hotel. It's a very useful and they're stackable. So this will be used at the same time as a backrest for him. So when he sits here, he can put his back here. It's gonna be only clothed and it's gonna be soft. Okay, so performance. This bike performs well, really. It doesn't really need that much of uh, modifications, but we added a little bit, uh, mainly for the sound and a little bit of smoothness in the ride. So what we added is the Akrapovich slip-on exhaust. Uh, it comes in black and silver. We put the black one on and we removed the baffles. Uh, to remove the baffles, you will need to drill, drill the carbon cap, remove the screws, and then put the Akrapovich rubbers on. So we've done that and we retuned the bike uh, with brand tuning. So we pulled the file, we told them what we modified on the bike and we send it there. Another thing is that we put the Sprint water uh, proof filter in. So it gives the bike a little bit more breathability and protects from water entering into the engine through uh, the nozzles. So that's about it from performance, just the filter exhaust and the retune. Okay, so on our next category is uh, comfort and ergonomics. Uh, what we started with is the handlebars. So we've put the Rizoma uh, handlebar risers. These are our about six uh, centimeters, 60 millimeters. So they take it up and pull it back. They give you much better comfort on long rides, especially uh, with your shoulders. So your hands are a bit uh, bent and it gives a better uh, feel uh, for the steering. So, this is the first thing we've done. Then we've put on the grip puppies. These are heat compatible, so if you have heated grips, they're not gonna affect it. It gives you a bigger grip, and at the same time, it removes a lot of the vibration that you can uh, feel. The third thing was the seats. So this is the Wonderlish Low Comfort Seat, uh, and we've put on the rear one the cool covers. Of course, the front one also has a cool cover, but you can put it normally when it's hot uh, or the weather, the sun is hitting too hard, so we put the cool cover. He's carrying it as a spare, but in Europe, you might not need this. We kept it on the uh, rear seat. We also put the MFW highway foot pegs. So this, when you are on a highway, you have the cruise control on. It's good to change the position of your legs by lifting them on these uh, highway foot pegs. So what we installed next was the pivot pegs. So they give you a much bigger platform to put your feet. It gives much more comfort and they do pivot while you're going off road. It's much more comfortable to be able to pivot the pegs. So this is from ergonomics and comfort. Okay, lights. Lights is a big subject, of course, for everybody who works, uh, who has a GS. Uh, with this bike, we went with a very uh, strange setup. It's different than what people normally use. This is the Baja LP4 lights. Uh, they are around 18,000 lumens. They have two spots, two floods, and they also have side shooters. So you can actually see 180 degrees around you. Uh, we've put two LP4s on, and then this is the S1. 
The S1 we mounted on the fork, so when you turn, the light will turn in the direction you're turning. Now, all this is connected to a Hex Easy Can, which controls the light and gives it a lot of functionality. And we'll show you a little bit. So, for example, this is the lights are on. What you, if you do a high beam, the lights will go high beam. If you do high beam three times, for example, it will strobe. Uh, if you use the horn, that's another thing we're gonna talk about soon. We've put a Denali sound, uh, sound bomb horn on this, so it's really loud. If you do an indicator, the light will shut down for you to, for the people to see that the indicator is on. If you do the hazard lights, they will alternate between the lights and the hazard lights. So a lot of functionality with these lights. Additionally, from after the lights with the electronics part, we've put the Innov K3 cameras. These cameras are operational 24 by seven. They're always running. So if something happens and you missed it, your GoPro is not on or whatever, this thing will catch you for sure. And then you can connect with your mobile and download that. Now on the back side, we added two B6 brake lights. Again, these are really good, really strong. They act as light and a brake light. On, and when you hit the brake, these will blink because of the Hex Easy Can. And you can configure them even if you decelerate using the downshift, they will also blink. Again, we have a second Innov camera that will catch everything from uh, uh, the rear of the bike. And these two can be downloaded always through your mobile app from Innov. Okay. To add just a few more things for electronics, we have put two phone mounts here from Rockform. This will be used the GPS as a, and as a phone mount. And we have replaced the DIN socket that BMW provides with a Wonderlish piece that gives two USBs, which I think is much more useful. And they are watertight as well. So that is, has also been done as part of the electronics. And finally, a piece that is considered probably both ergonomics and uh, electronics is the windshield. We have added the Puig uh, electrical windshield. So there is a Puig screen and the electrical system. And this one you can uh, bring up or down using an electrical switch. Okay, so from a styling perspective, We've did some paint, some stickers, nothing uh, too much. First of all, we've put the full motographic sticker kit on the peak, on the tank, and uh, as a tank protector here. We also have painted the crash guards entirely with a color which is a bronze with clear, so it looks really nice, especially with the Kalamata color. And everything else from here backwards have been painted in black. So the base of the seat uh, is in black, the uh, foot, uh, foot pegs, the rear foot pegs for the pillion are in black, the carriers are in black, everything went black from uh, the backside. So this was a bit of styling, but it gave the bike a much nicer look. Uh, if you can see, there's not much of silver uh, remaining on the bike, and this was the, uh, what the client wanted. So this is what, the, what we've done for this GS. Again, this is a GS that has been built for a trip in Europe and a bit of uh, Northern Africa. Uh, it is designed to stay mostly on the road and on uh, light gravel roads. I know a lot of people will say this is too much. Some people might say this is too little, but again, this is what uh, the rider wants. This is what uh, he uh, have foreseen for his trip. Uh, we will be showing you another GS that has been prepared for more off-roading, a bit more technical uh, in the coming episode. But thank you for joining and see you next time.